My guest says the most important journey any person will take is the journey into becoming yourself through the love of God. If you enjoyed Captivating by Stacy and John Eldridge, you'll be excited as I am to meet the author of the best-selling women's spirituality classic. Stacy's new book is a perfect follow-up, Becoming Myself, Embracing God's Dream of You. Your first visit here, Stacy. I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Oh, now that we've broken the ice, you've got to keep Yeah, where have I been? I mean, where have you been? Thank you. And you know, we have women in the audience who uh, enjoyed spending breakfast with you. Thank you so much uh, for that. Um, I, I wonder if, if some of us are just surprised at what a huge struggle you had with self-image um, for, for all your childhood and beyond. Right, absolutely. And I, th I think it's, it's uh, wonderful to just say it out loud because it's a struggle that I think I share with the majority of women. And then when we, when we look at another woman, we don't have any idea of what her history is, what she's living with, what she's overcoming. And you just tend to think, well, they must have it all together. You know, no one is feeling what I'm feeling. But the truth is, oh, we are all overcoming so much and have lived with so much. Mm -hmm. And we're in this journey together with God towards healing and freedom and, and becoming the woman that he meant us to be, the woman we want to be. You're so vulnerable in here. Um, the, the opening chapter starts with a really embarrassing moment at a spa. Want me to tell the story? Oh, just a capsule. So, I've never been to a spa, but it's a gift. It's my mother-in-law is offering me this gift. She's come to visit, and as a treat, she wanted to take me to a really nice spa to get a massage, the Broadmoor. Really nice, like four star, however many stars you can possibly get, they have them. And I, I, uh... I didn't want to. I didn't want some stranger touching my body. I wasn't really happy with my body, but I, I needed to be good and at least pretend that I was happy to receive it and step into it. So we go to the spa, and it's lovely. When you check in, they give you this luxurious thick robe, and then they take you to the changing area to take your clothes off, put them in a put them in a locker, and I'm terrified. And I ask her. All of my clothes have to come <laughs> off. She said I could keep on my underwear if I really needed to, and I really needed to. So putting on that bathrobe was, was hard to expose my body, and I, so I did it as carefully as I could, trying not to expose an inch of skin to anybody that might glance my way. And it was hard, but I was determined. But more than I was mortified because the one-size-fits-all robe didn't fit. There was there was no getting it around my size, and I had to ah uh, put it away, get back dressed, go out front, and try to pretend that I'm not dying inside. I'm so embarrassed, but I had to ask, do you do you have a, a robe in another size, a larger size? And they did. They had a man's robe in a completely other color than the women's robes. So they're all walking around in these cute little white robes, and mine might as well have been orange, flashing signs that said, obese, get out, doesn't belong here. And I, uh, I went to the bathroom and cried. I just wept. I was so embarrassed and thought, oh, God, please, 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 let me never be in this position again. But that wasn't actually enough to have me never be in that position again. And sadly, this wasn't a one-time thing. I gasped to read that your mom had you on a diet plan in fourth grade. You had a dietitian in 10th grade. You were, you were just a wee bit chubby as a, that little fourth grader. Right, right. When you had that, you know, I, I, had to, I was a little chubby. I had to, seven pounds to lose. Come on. And I look at pictures of myself and I'm fully expecting to see the homely, chubby, embarrassed looking little girl and I now now I can see myself because in my eyes as a little girl I saw that homely chubbly you know overweight little girl but now I look at those pictures and oh my goodness I wasn't I was I was just normal normal yeah I so relate to this my brother called me chubs growing up so uh, I, I mean definitely relate to the struggle you you quote CS Lewis until you have given yourself to him, you will not have a real self. Mm. It wasn't until college that you found Christ yes. and yeah. became actively involved in ministry. You've mm -hmm. been active ever since. Mm -hmm. But this is a clear portrait that the work 
wasn't done. Oh no. See, the, the name of the book is Becoming Myself because we are becoming. It's a journey. One day we will see him face to face and it will be complete. The transformation, we are being transformed into his image, but we're not done yet. And, and so part of the journey is increasingly growing in our freedom and moving towards it. We're not supposed to be done. We're not going to be done. And that's, that's okay. For me, becoming a Christian, I was in my early 20s, and it was really, it was die or turn my life over to Jesus. Really? Really. I was, it, I had tried to kill myself a few times. I was in the hole. You would not recognize, I wouldn't recognize me, the seedy underbelly of the world that I was living in. And in that place, Jesus called out to me. Come take my, come to me. You're weary. I'll give you rest. And I, that verse in Matthew 11, 28, I turned my heart over to him. And I, at that point, uh, was slender because I did a lot of drugs, but I, I couldn't not drink or smoke pot or do drugs. I couldn't go 24 hours with any of those things. But after becoming a Christian, I, I realized one day that it had been two weeks, which was amazing. But, but I didn't immediately become healed. I didn't address issues from my past or childhood or abuse. And, and I didn't know how to do that. I didn't know what to do with my broken, bleeding heart. And so after a few years, I started handing that over to the drive through window. Wasn't addicted to drugs anymore. But Food I started to... with love. Food yeah, it would comfort. soothe me. And the thing is, is that it works. I would feel better mm. for a little bit. But then I would need some more. So I would get a little more. And I got into a fix, you know, that I've spent decades to get out of. I wonder if it will speak to many that, you know, we begin reading about your childhood in Kansas and, and the wonderful early life that you had. Mm -hmm. There was a veil of deception around all of that. Yeah, there is. And it must have been hard to look at reality and realize there was a lot of wounding, mm -hmm. a lot of things that you needed to face, feel, and deal mm -hmm. with. And there's really a timing issue with that because you, because you have to be ready. Jesus is really the one that sets the timing. Let's go there now. Let's remember accurately because even in my looking back, I've Ozzy and Harriet. I, that was my life. You know, <laughs> that was the show. And um, it really wasn't until my mid 30s when I was willing to say, um, no, it wasn't, it, it wasn't, it actually really wasn't. But it was up until that time that I had a firm foundation in knowing I was so loved by God, so secure that facing my past or even having conflict in my marriage was not going to throw me. I would, I would not die, it was not gonna kill me. If I started to cry, there would come a time when I would stop. It's, it's a journey that he takes us on to look back and remember with him. That's a, a, a beautiful picture. The everlasting arms underneath have got you. Yes. So you can go and do that difficult thing. Yes. You're not going to crash and burn. Right. Or you may for a little bit, but <laughs> then you'll be all right again. <laughs> this beautiful process of, of healing, you say true transformation can't be forced from the outside. We've got to go in. Yeah. You know, I have to say with, and you, I've shared this before, uh, with Captivating, I found, I mean, this is a book that was huge with women, but there are some mm -hmm. who just didn't want anybody. Yeah, don't going, go there. Yeah, too personal, don't want to open the box. Mm -hmm. um, but here's the blessing. And I love that you reinforce it in your book. I think the whole chapter is called Looking Back with Mercy. Yes. And I found this with so many women that when you look honestly and let the Lord heal those things yes. and forgive, yeah. huge component. Yes. You can look back and see the grace, see the love mm. that maybe wasn't expressed in words. Right. See that it wasn't as bad as bad in some ways, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because you're seeing through the eyes of Jesus. Yes, wow. yes, and we can have mercy for parents that failed us or the uncle that abused us, but you can't start there. You really have to go with God and this hurt, this was real and I'm worth grieving over. God calls us to have mercy for other people because he has mercy for us. And then the key is actually, we get to be merciful with ourselves, merciful with our own hearts, our own failures. And he sees with mercy. So we get to see with mercy too. Mm -hmm. 
I, I love the story. It's really appropriate right now for all of us on the Daniel plan. And those of us who maybe aren't as athletic, your friend Julie out there running. Oh, yes. And one of these, you know, real runners zooms past yes, her. Yes, yes. Tell yeah. it, tell it. Oh, my friend Julie is awesome. And she was, you know, new year, new you. Let's go for it. And starting an exercise regime. And it was raining, but she still did it. She went out. She was faithful. And she was slogging through her run. It was new when this woman ran by that leapt like a gazelle and and Julie thought you know maybe fitness is only for the fit this is so hard God change is so hard and she heard his voice within say what if change is me merely unveiling who you really are oh I love that oh so there, there is a participation that he asks of us. He does this work, faithful as he was called us, and he will do it. He will complete the good work he's begun in us. But he asks for our yes. Yes, God, I'll invite you in. Yes, I'll go where you say. Yes, I'll participate. I'll choose. I'll, I'll stay in your word. I will actually choose to believe it. So we get, we get to hurry the process along when we say yes to him. I have thought that very thing when I've looked at, you know, the magazines, they're everywhere. Someone who's really, really massively obese uh -huh. and they've lost huge amount of weight. And mm -hmm. there's a, you, you almost don't recognize right. the person. And it's, it, it's as if that person was hidden. It's like they stepped out they, of they themselves, out, isn't it? That's who that is. Yes. But it's not just the physical. Oh, no. And this isn't about, as you said at breakfast, this isn't about becoming perfect. Right. It's, it's about becoming like Jesus. Yes. More of him. Mm -hmm. He doesn't, you know, capture our attention with ourselves. We, we know ourselves really well. But when he captures our attention with who he is, then, then we love him more. The more we know him, the more we love him. I think that's the best thing. And then the more we love him, the more he inhabits, the more true we are to ourselves because he changes us to be like him. That's, that's the journey. Mm -hmm. Kansas for, for childhood, South California yes, to yes. be near the beach, met your husband, uh -huh. John. Uh, how many men have read Wild at Heart? Just one of his greats. Three sons. Yes. I, uh, how old are they? Uh, I have a 24-year-old who's married, a 23-year-old, and a soon-to-be 21-year-old. And nobody at home with you in Colorado no, Springs? No, the they have the, the audacity <laughs> to grow up and move out and start their lives, which has really been hard. I love them. So actually, two of them are coming home in a couple nights, so I'm gonna, I get to see them, and I'm glad. So sweet. <laughs> and it's uh, maybe no surprise that the ministry you and your husband uh, share is entitled Ransomed Heart. Yeah, yes. That's your story. Yes, it is, Ransomed Hearts. That's what Jesus does. He comes to ransom, and he has. He's paid our ransom, but he's continuing to do it. Our God who saved us, he's continuing to save us increasingly over our lives, more and more healing, more and more freedom, getting to know him more and more deeply. We're never gonna get to the end of that, and that's not bad news, that's great news. There's always more for us. Yeah. And that's a real good point to end yeah. on for all the good things we're encouraging. Yes. And uh, all you have to do is turn on the TV to hear 101 ways to start your new year right now. But what we really need more of is Jesus. Yes. Stacy, thank you again. Uh, becoming myself, embracing God's dream of you. I heard after I left the breakfast that you talked about how many people dream and don't have a dream. Right, right. The more, it's about 80% of people don't dream at all. We're not talking about dreaming when you're sleeping. No, I mean, We're have a dream, a desire, like own it. We can dream for other people. Like we know what our lives, like for our children or for friends, we have dreams for them. But to dream for yourself, to be awake to the longings that God has placed in you. It's literally only 1% oh. that have them, write them down, look at them. And guess what? Their dreams are coming true. Okay, guys, there's our New Year's resolution mm. right now to be praying about what dream do you want to place before the Lord. And Stacy will encourage you. Her book is at our e-store.